The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry. Now let's join the great Gildersleeve. It's Saturday morning. Breakfast is over at Gildersleeve's house, and... Leroy, where do you think you're going? Me? Out. Not so fast, young man. Have you cleaned up your room? Well, partly. I would like to know which part you believe you've cleaned up. I glanced into it on my way down to breakfast, and I cannot understand how any human being could inhabit such a room. I'll straighten it up. How can you get into such a mess? I don't know. Well, I know, because you just dropped everything on the floor. Take off your clothes, drop them on the floor. Finish the paper, drop it on the floor. Books on the floor, papers on the floor, towels on the floor. <coughs> uh, who's... Oh, uh, hello, Ben. Hi, Mr. Gilson. <laughs> I didn't see you sitting there. <laughs> Sorry we have to go through these little domestic matters. <laughs> That's okay. We uh, understand each other, do we, Leroy? I guess so. What's Ben doing here? Waiting for Marge. Marge? Oh. Well, uh, get started on your room. Okay. Then can I go out? Have you practiced the piano? I'll do it this afternoon. This morning, Leroy, while we're fresh. Mm, for corn's sake, it'll be afternoon before I can play at all. We go through this every week, my boy. I should think you'd learn. Now get at it. Well, I said it is getting to be the worst day of the whole week. Uh, <laughs> boys. <laughs> well, Ben, haven't seen you in quite a while. Good to see you. Where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, I don't know. It's that darn job, I guess. Takes up a lot of time. Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> I wonder if you'd pardon me while I make a phone call. Just make yourself at home here, Ben. Oh, sure. Where the dickens is Marjorie, I wonder. Ben, shouldn't you be just sitting around like that? You use the phone, Miss Jill, please. I thought I'd order the roast for tomorrow. I'll be through in just a minute, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll wait. Uh, you needn't wait, Bertie. I'll call you in there. Hello? I'll call you, Bertie. Okay, Miss Gill, please. Let me know. Hello? Is Miss Piper there, please? Oh, well, I'll call her later. Thank you. Oh, yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, hello, Dr. Needham. How are you? Didn't recognize your voice. Well, I wanted to talk to Miss Piper about um, uh, Leroy's piano lessons. But I can call her some other time. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. You bet, Doctor. Goodbye. All right, Bertie, come and get it. Yes, sir. Oh, Ben, uh, let's see. You're waiting for Marjorie? Yes, sir. Huh? Thought she might like to jump in the car and drive down to Beesmeyer's with me. Got to pick out the tire. Oh, yes. Had a flat. They're putting in the boot. Boot. Oh, yeah. well, Marjorie... Is uh, she... Oh, she has some stuff she has to finish. She said, I'm just waiting. I see. Well, <laughs> uh, who's that? Excuse me. Well, good morning, Gildy. Oh, hello, Judge. <laughs> What's on your mind? Come in. Hang up your chair and take a hat. Uh, yeah. huh. My friend, I've been working for you like a dog the last half hour. Working? For me? Who hired you? Why? What are you talking about? Why in the name of heaven didn't you meet Leela Ransom's train this morning? Train? Why, George, I forgot all about it. Did you meet her? Certainly I met her. She's a client of mine. You're going to have to do some explaining, Gildy, if you want to get back in her good graces. You needn't raise your voice, Judge. Uh... Oh, didn't see you there, Ben. Hi, Judge. Hi. Hi. If I were you, Gildy, I'd run right over there now and start apologizing. Tell her that you were tied up or something. I forgot, Judge. I told you that. Forgot? You've got that young woman on your mind. And... Um, ben, <laughs> I wonder if you'd mind. Uh, the judge and I have something confidential to do. Uh, would you mind sitting in the dining room for a few minutes? No, that's okay. I'll sit anywhere. What were you starting to say, Judge? Gildy, I'm a good friend of yours. I hesitate to speak about such a personal matter. You didn't hesitate just now. Come on, say it. I dare you to say it. Gildy, that's not the spirit. As I say, I'm bringing this up as a friend. Now, you and this Piper girl... Stop! I will not have her referred to as this Piper girl. In fact, I take it as a personal favor if you refrain from mentioning the lady's name at all. Very well. The fact remains that you're making a fool of yourself, Gildy. The whole town's talking about you and Leroy's music teacher. That's ridiculous. I've hardly seen the girl. 
Besides, I... Well, our whole relationship is something you couldn't possibly understand. A peculiar and unique relationship, is that it? No. It's just beautiful, that's all. Just so happens she's a very fine pianist. Well, to me and to all the other decent people in town, it's just an old fool chasing after a child. Oh! <laughs> Kindly leave my house, Mr. Hooker, immediately. <laughs> Lily Bee. The way I look at it, a man's as young as he feels, and no older. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I gotta go now, Lily Bee. I heard the doorbell ring. I'll call you later. Bertie. Yes. Yeah. Are you talking about me? No, sir. I didn't think you were. May I use a telephone now, please, Bertie? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Help yourself, Mr. Gilsey. You pay the bill. The phone's yours any time you want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder who Bertie was talking about. Well, she couldn't possibly have heard. Hello. Uh, Miss Piper there? Well, never mind. I'll... Uh, yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Dr. Needham. Terribly sorry to keep bothering you all the time. I, uh, well, no, doctor, don't bother. I'll call her again. You bet. Goodbye. How does he recognize my voice every time? Darn it, makes a fellow feel, I don't know, it's like he could see over the phone. <laughs> ben, are you still here? Yes, sir, I'm still here. All right, George, I had no idea. Marjorie must be... I'll call her. Oh, now, don't rush her, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've got all day. That's nonsense. Marjorie, come down here at once. Gosh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're liable to make her sore. You don't have My to make her... My dear boy, no young lady has any excuse to keep a young man waiting for three hours. Ye gods. Did you call me, Auntie? Yes, indeed. Poor Ben's been sitting here for hours waiting for you to go somewhere. What's the idea? Oh, is he still here? You... <laughs> what time is it? 11.30. I'm afraid I can't go after all, Ben. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was so late. Well, that's okay. It is not okay. Oh, please, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's okay with me. I'll see you around, Marge. Okay. Drop in soon again, Ben. Glad to see you anytime. Thanks. Anytime at all, Ben. So long, Ben. So long. Say goodbye, Marjorie. So long. So long, Marge. Well, that's a fine way to treat anybody, I must say. I say that's a fine way to treat anybody. Are you referring to me? Who do you think I'm referring to? Well, who wants to drive down to Beast Myers, for heaven's sake? What a dumb idea. If you didn't want to go, you might have told him so in the first place, instead of making him hang around here for three hours cooling his heels. Nobody made him. If he hasn't got anything better to do, you I could... You have told him you had no intention of going. Well, why can't he take a hint, for heaven's sake? That's the trouble with Ben. That's all he ever wants to do is just hang around. Besides, he's too old. Oh, that's the... <laughs> that's the silliest statement I ever heard. Ben, old? 23 or 24, maybe? Well, he is. Good luck. Well, he never wants to do any of the things the other kids do. He's always trying to get serious. My dear, life is serious. Ben's been in the Navy. He knows that. <laughs> Young yet, for heaven's sake. I want to enjoy myself a little while I've got my youth. I don't want to start getting serious. Not yet. Not with somebody years older than I am. Four years? Five at the most? Well, six, maybe. Why are you throwing Ben at me all of a sudden? I'm not throwing Ben at anybody. I'm just defending him, that's all. I'm saying just because he's a few years older than the others, well... Uncle Mort, you're not fooling me. What's that? You're not defending Ben. You're defending yourself. What do you mean? You just don't want people to think you're too old to be running around with Miss Piper, that's all. Oh? You want them to think it's all right for somebody older to go around Where did you get the idea I'm running around with Miss Piper? Oh, really, Uncle Mort? Everybody in town is talking about it. Who is? What do they say? Never mind what they say. Just as... Just as I thought. No one said anything. They do, it's a lie. 
If anybody says anything, I'll... Well, they're just a lot of nosy parkers. What do I care what they say? Anki, all you do is think about yourself. What about Miss Piper? You don't seem to care if the whole town is laughing at her. Laughing? I should think you'd be embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Uncle Mort, how do you think she must feel? Well, You're 44. She's 20. How would you like it if people called you an old fool's bauble? <laughs> Who said that? Marjorie? Marjorie, you come back here. She's right, though. Never thought of it that way. An old fool's bauble. See? <laughs> they can't say that about her. She's fine. She's good. She has her whole life before her. Well, I... Well, her happiness is everything. Mine is nothing. It's her happiness that counts. Well, George, I've got a good mind to call her right up and tell her so. No, no, that's not the way. That can only lead to heartache. Face it, old man. You've got to give it up. Bravely, unselfishly. You've got to give her up, and she must never know. Never know how you loved her. It's a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. <laughs> who said that? I don't know who said it, but I know how he felt. The Great Gildersleeve and Leela Ransom will be back very shortly.
to Gildersleeve. Poor Gildersleeve, victim of a tragic love, a love he cannot declare, a love that can never be. For the first time, he has had to face this simple truth. Joanne is 20, he is 44. His own niece is throwing it in his face. He was missing from dinner this evening. Without a word to anybody, he threw on his overcoat and stalked out of the house. He walked and he walked, aimlessly, hands rammed down in his pockets and staring straight ahead. Down Lakeside Avenue, across on Cherry, up Havenhurst, over on Woodruff, and on down Larchmont. On and on, till he came to the outskirts of town. Meanwhile, the sun had set. Now all that is left is the afterglow. And there stands Gildersleeve, staring into the dark waters of his own reservoir, while thoughts even darker struggle in his head. No, no. That would be the coward's way out. And besides, it's cold. No, Gildersleeve, you'll just have to face it. Life must go on. Be brave, old boy. Be gay. She must never know. No one must ever know. She? Well, what the heck? Hey, hey. What the heck? Here today and gone tomorrow. Welcome home, Leela. By George, you're a sight for sore eyes. Get your hat. We're going to the movies. Well, I wondered when I was to have the honor. And don't give me any back talk. <laughs> what if I don't care to go to the movies? And we'll stay right here. Sorry I couldn't get to the train, Leela, but you know how it is. Really? I don't know why I even let you in the house. Because I'm irresistible. I'd hardly call you that, but you're certainly unpredictable. Oh, you don't know how unpredictable I can be. I just don't give a hang. Mmm, chocolates. Have one. Mm, got one. I must say, you Yankees certainly make yourselves at home. Mm hmm. That's us. And is that a love seat? Certainly it's a love seat. Then why aren't we sitting on it? Come here. Trot, Martin. <laughs> what the heck? I declare I don't know what's got into you. The devil, I guess. I don't care what I do. Throckmorton, I hardly know you when you're like this. How about a kiss? What the heck? Really? What's the matter? Why, I've never had anyone speak to me like that. Never. Never asked you for a kiss? Oh, well, certainly. Gracious, hundreds of them. But never will, will never like that. I mean, after all. I'm not a fellow that beats around the bush. Get an idea? Bingo. I don't care. What the heck? <laughs> well, in that case, you're talking to the wrong girl. Well, now, wait a minute, Leela. What are you sore about? Down where I come from, a gentleman just doesn't rush up to a lady and ask her for a kiss like order and a loaf of bread. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Leela. Come on back and sit down. I'll try to be nice. You haven't asked a thing about me. What I've been doing all these months, or how is my Auntie Pooh or anything... How is your Annie Poo? <laughs> She's fine. That's good. Yeah, she seems to have recovered completely. Huh? After I waited on her all those months, hand and foot. <laughs> Remarkable old lady. Oh, for goodness sakes, the doctor gave up completely three months ago. I helped her make out a will and everything. How'd you come out? How did I? In the will. A will is a confidential document, Rock Martin. Oh, pardon me. What use have I got for a lot of old furniture? Oh, but let's not talk about wills and things like that. Let's talk about you. Have you missed me, Rock Martin? Uh, yes, I have. Ah, oh, I'll bet you're just saying that. I'll bet you've had dozens of girls since I left. No, no, I've been too busy. One man? Oh, I I'd rather you had dozens than just one. Uh, by the way, how is Eve Goodwin? Eve? Well, I haven't seen Eve Goodwin in a month, and that's a fact. Really? 
She's so nice. Of course, she may be a little intellectual for you. Oh, I don't know. I always admire people with brains. I admire them terribly. But for a steady diet... Yeah, you're better. <laughs> people have always said to me all my life, Leela, child, you haven't a brain in your pretty little head. <laughs> but I don't mind. The boys don't seem to mind either. <laughs> Do you think brains are so important, Frock Martin? In the long run, I mean. Brains now. Ah, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm back. Oh, I, I had a perfectly wonderful time down in Savannah, of course, with parties and balls and folks entertaining for me every minute. But I don't know. All the time I was down there, I kept thinking of the good times I used to have up here. Mostly with you. Uh-huh. Well... The long conversations we used to have in the evening. And then the evenings without any conversation. <laughs> the evenings when I'd play the piano for you and you'd sing. Let's do that now. No, no. Oh, I know I'm terribly rusty. I haven't played all winter. Please, Lena. Not the piano, please. Oh, don't be silly. There's plenty of time. Leela, as a favor to me, not the piano. I declare, Frog Martin, all you ever think about is spooning. Huh? Now, come and sing for Leela, please. Pretty please. Oh, why does she do this to me? Rock Martin, please. Felina? Just when I was trying to forget. Oh, be a good boy now, please. Well, give me strength. Oh. <laughs> That's a darling. Now sing pretty, Felina. <laughs> to me of love and say what I'm longing to hear. <laughs> Tender words of love. Da, 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 da. Again, I am. I've forgotten the words, Leela. Forgotten? What's wrong, Throckmorton? There's something on your mind. Tell Leela. I've got to, Leela. I've got to tell somebody. Oh, you can tell Leela. Well, uh, let's go over here and sit down. Mm -hmm. I'll just sit on the rug here so you can talk to me. I like sitting on the rug anyway. Now. Leela. I love sharing confidences, don't you? Well, go ahead, Throckmorton. Leela, do you think it's possible for two people to be happily married when they... Oh, I do, Throckmorton, definitely. <laughs> Leela, wait till you hear. I haven't told you yet. Oh. Well, I'm listening. What I mean is, do you think it's a mistake? Uh, do you think there's any hope for a marriage of May and September? May and September? Well, October. In other words, do you think a few years difference in age is important? I'm asking you that as a woman. I'm glad you asked me, Throckmorton, because I'll tell you how I feel about that. No, I don't think it's important. You don't? It doesn't matter if a man is older. The important thing is whether he really loves you. Oh, there's no question about that. Why, sometimes it's actually an advantage if the man is older. Oh, you really think so? Mm. It, it means he's apt to be, well, kinder and more experienced. He's able to protect her better. That's right. I never thought of that. Oh, and, and that's not all. Why, I don't know any woman who doesn't find older men more fascinating than young ones who don't know anything. Young whippersnappers. Mm, exactly. Oh, they may be fun to dance with and all that. Gracious, I had a flock of them around me all the time I was in Savannah. And they were just as sweet as they could be. Just darlings, every one of them. 
But I don't know. There's something about a man after he starts to turn gray at the temple. But you're always hearing people say that when a man marries someone who's... Well, younger than himself. Rock Martin, the world is full of people who are always minding other people's business. What does it matter what they say? Yeah, yeah, what do they know? Hmm. What does it matter what people think? It's love that counts. You said it. Love can conquer anything. What a few years. Leela, you're a good girl. Oh, why, you were silly ever to worry about it. Gracious, if I'd had the slightest idea... You've I... given me new hope, that's why. Yes, my George, I'm not so old. I've still got some big years left, plenty of them. Well, of course. What's more, I haven't got much use for any man who'd let public opinion stand in the way of a girl's happiness. Mm. Just because she happened to be a little young? Mm -hmm. Is that her fault? Is that any reason to condemn her? Doc Martin, there's a little confession I could make. If it would be any comfort to you. Well, what's that? I told a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not really 33. I'm 37. Right. So you see, we're not really so far apart anyway. <laughs> Leela. Yes, Throckmorton. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> I've said to her. She just doesn't understand me, that's all. Now, Joanne, she doesn't understand me either. But she could. If I were free to speak to her, tell her what's in my heart. Well, why shouldn't I? What am I afraid of, for goodness sake? Dr. Needham? Ha! I'll march right over there and I'll say to him, I'll say, Dr. Needham, I'm in love with your house guest. She's 20 and I'm 44. What do you want to make of it? I guess you won't know what to say to that. Good evening, folks. Who's that? Uh, that's you, Joanne. This is Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello. Come up on the porch, won't you? Be glad to see me. Now or never. Look here, Dr. Houseguest. I mean, Dr. That's not Dr. Needham. No. Uh, hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ben! <laughs> Have some lemonade. <laughs> yes, won't you join us? No, no, no. No, thank you. I just happened to be passing by. Just thought I'd drop by and say hello. Well, <laughs> I said it. Bye. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.